So this over here is the 14900K, the new best CPU from Intel for desktop. But the question is, how good is it? You might have seen some gaming reviews out there, but for creators, what has actually changed and how good is it and how does it compare to the best of AMD? The 7950X as well as the previous generations from Intel, like is it worth upgrading from 13900K? Well, let's find out. Looking for a cheap way to license your Windows? Check out WhoKeys through the links in the video description. Make sure to use the code TN20 to get a 30% off. Paste the license to the activation settings and you're all done. This license is for Windows 10, but you can upgrade it to Windows 11 for free. They also offer Microsoft Office 19 license. Use the same code TN20 to get a 30% off. Check out WhoKeys.com in the video description below. Let's look at the specs. Here I have 14900K, 13900K, 7950X and 12900K. So the best i9s and Ryzen 9s, what we can get right now and as you can see between the 13900k and 14900k not a lot has changed basically the only thing that has changed is that the, now the cpu can boost up to 6 gigahertz out of the box the p core all frequency can sustain at 5.6 gigahertz which is 200 megahertz higher than the previous generation in boost and p core all core boost clock speeds and the e core max turbo frequency has also increased by just 100 megahertz all the rest is exactly the same in terms of the price of all of these three four i'm gonna leave the latest pricing in the description below but i think you want to hear my conclusion about the price because there might actually be some good news uh, that we'll talk about in the end of the video now let's talk about my testing setup and methodology because i have changed it since last year i am testing the cpus with the rated ram kit speed if that makes sense so if the cpu imc or memory controller can support up to what the specs say 5600 megahertz which this 14th gen can do then i'm going to test the ram at that speed so i have a kingston fury beast kit and this supports expo and xmp for both intel and amd so i was able to use the same kit of ram for both of these testing setups and for amd this kit is running at 5200 mega transfers even though the kit is 6000 so you can run it at 6000 and then on the 13th gen i was running at 5600 mega transfers per second as well as on the 14th gen because that's what it's rated at on the 12th gen i was testing it at 4800 mega transfers per second because that's the maximum rated imc there now that doesn't mean that you can't go any higher yes you can but in that case you're actually going above the spec and you might not reach those speeds if that makes sense and also by adding this way of testing the cpus we're also testing the memory controller of the cpus because when the new generation comes out it's probably a better memory controller which means that this will reflect on the benchmarks what we see here rather than trying to run them all of them either down clocking or up clocking the lower end ones which wouldn't be fair for either of the way if you want to check out the rest of the test bench setup all the motherboards cpus gpus well cpus you already know and everything i'm going to leave them in the description below so you can check them out first the memory controller speed because from 12th gen going to 13th gen we actually increased the memory controller speed what it can actually offer we went from 4800 to 5600 which is extra 800 megahertz boost and i expected the same with the 14th gen but that's not what i got in fact the imc is exactly the same as on the previous generation but on the review guide intel actually says you might want to use some faster kits of ram what you used on the 13th gen so in theory the memory controller has actually improved because this CPU lineup is kind of like a refresh, the refinement process of that Intel's 10 nanometer kind of process node. So now after a year or maybe a little bit more later now when they've done it since 12th gen, they've refined the process. They can get a little bit of a better quality silicon out there, which means that you can run them probably a little bit faster and the IMC is better. Usually, you know, on binned CPUs, the integrated memory controller is better. And that's why I've put 5,600 mega transfers plus. So if you plan to run RAM above the 5,600 mega transfers, 
then most likely the 14th gen will run it a little bit better than the 13th gen and 12th gen. It's kind of the same as on the 13th gen on the paper, but potentially a little bit better, but then still a little bit better than the Ryzen 7000 at 5200 megatransfers per second. So if you do want to run faster, higher capacity RAM, then you're most likely going to achieve those speeds with the 14th gen compared to any of the other competition, if that makes sense. In terms of power consumption, the 14900K is a little bit more power hungry than the 13900K. And in terms of the power limit spec on 13th gen and 14th gen, it's exactly the same. 253 watts on the boost power. But if you turn on the multi-core enhancement, which in most of the motherboards is enabled by default, the motherboard is going to try to extract all the performance from the CPU to push as much power through the CPUs as possible, as much as there is the thermal limit to absolutely max the thermal limit. So I am seeing 325 watt plus pulled from my Z790 Pro Art motherboard from ASUS and most likely you're going to see the same in any of the other motherboards. The 3900K in the same motherboard is pulling around 315 watts maximum. The 7950X on the X670E motherboard will pull about 230 watts in the boost power all clock speeds Cinebench R23 multi-core workload and the 12900K about 223 watts. So we've added extra 100 watts between the 12th gen and the 14th gen, which is quite a large power increase. In terms of Cinebench R23, the 13th gen is about 5% slower in the single core score. The 7950X is again slower and the 12900K is quite a bit slower there, about 12% in the single core score and about 31% in the multi core score. But bear in mind that the 12900K only has 8E cores compared to the 16 what we have on the 13th and 14th gen. Interestingly, the multi core score actually I got a little bit of a higher score on the 13900K than on the 14900K. In Cinebench R24, the 13900K is about 3% slower in the single core score and about 3.1% slower in the multi core score. So here we can actually see a difference in the multi core score. The 7950X is 11% slower in the single core and about 7% slower in the multi core score. The 12900K is between 14 to 33% slower in those scores. In Geekbench 5, the 13900K is about 3% slower in the single core and about 1.3% slower in the multi core score. The 79 9950X interestingly is about 10% slower in the multi core score, even though the multi cores are all P cores and boost much higher than the average core on Intel setup, and about 4.3% slower in the single core score. The 12900K gets about 15 to 22% slower scores in this benchmark. Moving on to actual applications, and first of all, Photoshop. So this is Photoshop 25, version 25. We can see that the 4900K is only slightly faster than the 13900K, which is only 1.5% slower in the overall score in general scores. As you can see, the 6 GHz isn't something uh, amazing to boast about. The 7950X loses out about 16% in overall score. Interestingly, the general score is 45% slower, which is quite a lot, but the filter score at the same time is 31% faster than the 14900K, which is interesting. The 12900K is about 15% slower in the overall score. Moving on to Adobe Lightroom. Lightroom Classic. Here we can see the 13900K is only slightly slower than the 14900K. 1.2% slower and in active score we're literally the same and in passive score slightly slower. So because of the multi-core boost clocks on the 4900K a little bit faster, we're seeing a slight increase in performance. The 7950X is about 10% slower in the overall scores and 12900K about 18% slower. Moving on to Premiere Pro. And the 3900K is about 1.6 to 2% slower in the overall scores here. And the 7950X about 9 to 10% slower in the standard and standard overall scores. 
interestingly the long GOP score as you can see on the Ryzen is 25 to 30 percent slower which is very interesting at the same time raw standard score is about 10.5 percent faster than the 14900k moving on to After Effects in here we can see that the 13900k is 0.7 percent slower uh, and some of the scores a little bit more but overall pretty much the same 7950x is about 2.4 percent faster because the tracking score is 50 percent faster interestingly on after effects the 12900k loses about 15 percent in the overall scores but the multi-core score is 32 percent slower and now in davinci resolve the 13900k is about 2.4 percent slower in the extended and standard overall scores so not a lot again the 7950x is 12 to 15 percent slower in the extended and standard overall scores and the 12900k about the same 12 to 15 percent slower moving on to blender and 3d we can see that the 14900k is actually slower than the 13900k now the 13900k actually uses an earlier version of the blender so interestingly for some reason the later version of blender is somehow slower than the earlier one by actually about 10 percent which is interesting in some of the scenes junk shop scene is pretty much equal two percent faster on the 13900k but that the 13900k is faster at any point just makes no sense to me but it's interesting 7950x though is even faster than the 14900k those 16 performance cores really do amazing in blender and in 3d as you can see 13 4 to 13 percent faster compared to the 14900k so even the 16e cores can't really match the 16p cores on the 7950x from amd the 12900k is about 30 to 40 percent slower in the monster junk shop and classroom scenes so quite a big performance improvement in v-ray the 13900k is actually one percent faster 7950x about 8.7 percent faster than the 12900k about 34 percent slower so again we're not seeing a massive performance increase compared to the last generation in v-ray i wanted to test the imc above its spec so I took the same RAM kit, the 6000 Mega Transfer Mac RAM kit, and I tried to dial in as fast RAM kit as possible to actually get a post and get it to run stable. So I tried 7000, 6800, didn't work, 6600 didn't work, but 6400 Mega Transfers did work. So now we're getting an extra 800 megahertz, which would be kind of like the generational leap, what we got from last generation, remember? And let's see how much of a performance increase would we get from the 4900K if you run it at 5600 mega transfers compared to the 64 mega transfers, exactly the same RAM kit, 64 gigabytes, one dim per channel. In Photoshop, we're actually gaining 5.4 percent which is quite a bit and the gpu score is about 12 percent faster which is again quite a big increase so in photoshop it does make sense to get faster ram if you can run it stable because this is out of spec it might lose or crash anytime you'll never know in lightroom classic we gain extra 5.3 percent which is again pretty much the same as what we saw in photoshop but in video editing in premiere pro we gained about 3.3 percent the intro frame score there was about five percent faster as you can see in the extended scores and 5.8 percent faster in the intro frame frame scores moving on to after effects we're getting extra 3.5 percent in the overall scores and about four percent in the ram preview so a little bit of a performance increase there as well in davinci resolve there we're not actually seeing that much of a difference as you can see the extended and standard over scores are less than one percent faster with the faster ram kit in conclusion uh what about this cpu then we can look at it two ways and we're gonna give you the bad news first and then the good news. The bad news is that there isn't really that big of a difference between the 14th gen and 13th gen. It's really less than 5% performance increase compared to the 13th gen. So we could say that this new generation is basically just a little bit of a refinement of the previous generation. So this 14900K is actually pretty much a 13900KS 
out of the box. Which actually brings the bad news even further and I could say that if you run any of the gigabyte motherboards then you can get 6 gigahertz by just one click in the BIOS. If you haven't seen my video how to do that it's super simple. If you run a 13700K or 13900K you can get 6 gigahertz by just flicking one 6 gigahertz boom button in the BIOS and you can get pretty much 99% of the performance of this 14900K. Now I would have expected a memory controller increase really with this spec, not 5600 megahertz, none of this either, so a little bit of a downer there as well. There's no new cores and the only thing that has changed with this CPU is just 200 megahertz boost clock in the P cores and 100 megahertz boost on the E cores which really is such a marginal increase in performance out of the box. But now the good news. One of the things is that even though they don't say that the memory controller does support faster RAM, it does most likely run it faster. So if you're a crate and you do want to get the fastest RAM possible and you want to take the little risk of, do you know what, I'm just going to run the RAM as fast as possible, then the 4900K is a better pick for you. It's just the best refinement process of that 10 nanometer note. The second good news is that it's best to get some upgrade for this platform rather than nothing at all. So we can get extra 5% increase even though it wouldn't make sense to upgrade from your 13th gen. It might be worth upgrading from your 12th gen to 14th gen, but then at the same time, you might want to upgrade to the 13th gen just because the 13th gen is now going to drop down in price because this is last generation. Which brings us to another good news is that Intel basically just drop the price of their own products. The 13th gen that was so good already for us now is even lower in price because of the new generation and they might want to sell the 13th gen off so most likely what i expect to happen is that the 14th gen is now going to take the price or the place instead of the 13900k so there but now the 13th gen is boom gonna go down there so now during the holidays when there's deals on black friday deals on newegg amazon i recommend checking out the 13900k because most likely this is going to be on the sale and you can potentially get it even faster. Well, you can if you run any of the Gigabyte Z690 or Z790 motherboards. So if you're asking which is the ultimate best crater CPU right now on the market, then yes, the 14900K really is the one by just a slight margin. Now, it's not really a generational improvement. This is more like, I don't know, the, the weather was better and the benchmarks worked kind of better. Some of these increases in performance are within margin of error, so it's pretty much the same as the 13th gen, but the good news is we can get the 13th gen now even cheaper. If you want to pick any of these CPUs out, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. But the most exciting thing now for me is I can't wait for AMD to launch a new CPU because whatever they do with the um, 9950X CPU, maybe it's going to have more than 16 cores, but that's probably going to absolutely wipe the 14th gen and I can't wait for that. So AMD, um, I'm excited to hear what you have to counter offer because Intel really um, is not that impressive. That's all. I'd love to know what you think in the comment section below. I'll meet you down there. Thanks guys for watching. Bye bye.